guys, Dave here, and this is the Phantom Zone. So in this episode, uh, I'm going to show you guys how I built a mobile ground station for my DJI Phantom. So in my last episode, I, I installed the ISOD Mini uh, along with a Imerson transmitter, and that's providing us uh, FPV capabilities along with uh, flight telemetry information coming out of the Phantom. Uh, in addition to that, I also installed a 2.4 gigahertz data link module. Now that, that module is part of DJI's ground station system and that's what gives us the autonomous flight capabilities of the Phantom. So as I began designing uh, this platform I did have a few requirements uh, that, I, that I wanted to meet uh, along with the build. The first of course uh, it, it needed to hold the, the, those pieces of equipment that I had just mentioned. In addition to that I wanted, I wanted to have a recharging station for most of the uh, batteries uh, for the equipment that we use when we go out flying. And, and then lastly, uh, it needed to be able to carry all of my equipment, or most, at least most of my equipment, when, when, I, when we go out flying. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what I've come up with. Okay, so this is a Stanley Fat Max Mobile Tool Station. Uh, it's basically a three compartment toolbox. As you can see, it has wheels and this expandable hinge system that slides open to gain access to all three compartments. Uh, on the back here, there's a handle that slides up so you can pull the toolbox to your location. Now here's the box fully extended and you can see inside the bottom box right now I have the carrying case for my Phantom and its transmitter. So when it's fully opened it becomes a very stable platform. This top will hold the iPad for programming autonomous missions and the Phantom transmitter with the Black Pro monitor for our FPV capabilities. So this is what we're going to start with and wait for it this is the end result. As you can see I've personalized the front of the box. Here's a shot of it fully extended uh, for some reason fully extended in the dark. Moving on. This view shows the iPad, the transmitter with the monitor and behind them mounted on the handle is the 2.4 gigahertz data link. This is the view from the back and you can see the power cable coming down and plugging into the 12 volt power connector on the back of the upper toolbox. The middle box is holding all the different chargers I'll be needing. There's some extra USB chargers in there. Uh, I have a still camera in there and the walnut box that holds the data link module. Uh, and then some miscellaneous cables for charging different devices. The upper box now is our charging station. I have a 500 watt power inverter and a 3 outlet 12 volt auxiliary power supply. Right now I've got a couple of USB chargers plugged in. I also have my chargers for the GoPro camera and Sony HD camera charging on the power inverter. The thing I really did was to put a, a little bit of a soft covering down on that inside. Again, so now uh, these these are held on uh, with some Velcro straps so they won't be moving around. I, but if I do need to get inside the box to get to that power inverter, the 800 watt power inverter, we'll just, we just lift them off there, take this box out. So now I've got access to the power inverter. You can see that is also in there uh, with a couple of pieces of velcro holding it in place so it's not going to move around uh, the, the the box that I built for it you know that that pretty much holds it in place as well so all the stuff I've got out on the table this all goes into the middle box of my mobile ground station uh, it, it's just a lot of miscellaneous things you know I've got a little, a little an extra camera over here uh, I've got some charging uh, USB charging sticks here an extra power supply there I've got plenty of power supplies or extra backup. So I've got extra, plenty of extra USB backup uh, supplies for all of my stuff. Uh, a little multi-tool back there, a flashlight. Uh, some miscellaneous USB cables that, that uh, for most of my products, my iPad, my iPhone, things like that. Uh, both, of my, both my chargers for my Phantom. I've got the charger for the Sony HD and the GoPro camera here. Uh, my Black Pro monitor. Uh, I've got a charger here. Uh, this is just uh, that, that data link system there, just disassembled. In addition to that, you know, we spoke this, this runs off the 12 volts coming out of that battery. But if for some reason that battery were to die, I've made kind of a low-tech battery backup with this right here. So I've, made extra, so I've made this little extra battery pack here. It's just a 12-volt uh, a DeWalt uh, drill battery. Uh, you can see that it's clearly marked on the front here, B plus, B minus. And so I just made a connector. Uh, that will plug in to that 
and that'll give me an extra extra backup power if for some reason everything else were to go out. Alright, so there's all those components that I had laid out on the table. You see they fit nicely into that middle box. I made some little storage units inside there. Uh, I just got some white uh, foam material that I've kind of packed around most of the stuff so it doesn't bounce around. Uh, this is that, that little uh, backpack, backpack case I told you guys I ordered. Uh, I think I paid $69 for it. It was relatively expensive. But that's where my, uh, my Phantom 2 will go uh, and, and the, uh, the transmitter. So all of that stuff just will fit in there. This actually worked out perfect because it fit perfectly inside and here. And so I can just slide that down and that will go straight inside. That's kind of everything inside. Okay guys, let's see how I built this bad boy. Let's start at the back of the top box. As you can see, I've installed a power switch and a 12 volt DC jack in the lower right corner. That 12 volt jack is where the data link gets its power, and the on-off switch applies power to the chargers inside the box. Okay guys, so part of the modification that I'm going to be doing uh, to this toolbox is I'm going to mount a 12 volt battery inside the, the upper box. Now, what I've got, I, I, I bought a uh, a phono jack plug that this is normally would go into a house into a wall outlet uh, and so I bought this this will work just fine as far as providing power bringing power out from the battery that's inside the box that's going to bring the power out and bring it up to my data link mo module on the top that's going to be mounted to this bar uh, in addition to that I've got a little on off switch so if you look at the box here you can see the back of it here you can see I've already cut the holes uh, for these two items uh, and it's simply a matter of the, the this one is just really plugs right in. And goes in from the back side. I've already got some screws in there to, to hold it with and I'll secure it down here in just a minute. Uh, but that's just going to plug in to the back of the unit right here. Make sure your screws are in. Uh, I'm going to put some nuts on the back side of those screws, I'll tighten it down. Obviously I'll paint over those little screws and black them out so they won't be so obvious there. So that's the back side of it. So we've got our on off switch and we've got 12, volt, 12 volts coming out of here. This will be hot wired for 12 volts so it's also going to be the charging port when I need to charge that 12 volt lead acid battery that I have inside. So I'll just plug in my battery charger into that there, into these connections, so that gives me a charging port as well. Okay guys, so uh, this is that 12 volt battery I was talking about. Uh, 12 volts, 8 amps, so it's got quite a bit of power for it for the little bit of uh, recharging and things like that that we're going to do. I have actually uh, tried that uh, 500 watt trans uh, inverter and, and charge a, uh, one of the Phantom batteries. And it, it did charge it, but it used pretty much most of the battery up. So. Uh, I have another another plan for that as well and again as we progress here I'll show you what my idea was on that. You can see this is the back side those are those outlets that we showed earlier and that's how they've been installed I've got the nuts on there and so they're all in place and ready to go. So what I'm going to do with this battery you know terminals on this side facing this direction. What I've done so what I've done is I've made a couple of uh, blocks and these are basically just going to go on either side and again I've already pre-drilled my hole so I know where everything needs to go at this point uh, so that lines up there these are these are the holes uh, and so that battery now is going to be t screwed down to there the one in the middle is also going to hold two velcro straps so these straps will just come along from either side and then I can lube this, latch this over like that. Uh, these will be screwed down again to that bottom frame. Uh, and so with the brace holding the whole base of it in place, this holding it down inside that inside the c container, uh, it'll it'll hold it in place very nicely, and it won't be it won't fall around or fall out of there. Okay, guys. So we've got the battery installed. That's all secure in there. Now, if you notice, if on either side of the box, I've cut out a rectangular hole. Uh, and I did that so that I could get some air circulate flowing in here. And I've just gotten a couple of pieces of uh, perforated metal that uh, I'm going to glue into here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how. I, I might just use hot glue. Uh, just so I've got some air circulation inside and nothing gets too hot. 
Alright, on to the next step, which is wiring it up. So this is just a quick lesson on uh, soldering. I'm sure you guys probably know how to do this already, but uh, make sure you're using a pretty high wattage soldering iron here. These are thick wires. Uh, they need a lot of heat. So first you just put a little bit of a uh, little bit of solder on the end of this tip here to get that, that end ten. If you bring it down to the back side of the wire and then bring your wire to the front and you let this heat up from the back side so that by the time the wire melts on the front the whole wire uh, should be nice and hot. And that's, that, that solder then will flow through all of those connections. It's just getting there. There we go. And if you can see that on the camera, you can see how it's starting to, see how that just took? go. <clears throat> so this wire that I'm making, you saw me just tin the end of, uh, this is going to be the connector. This end is going to be coming directly off of the battery uh, and this is going to plug in to that power strip that I mounted on the back uh, of the box. It's going to plug into the back, the back end of that and that's how we're going to get our power over to these. So I'll make another one of these. Uh, I've already got one started. Uh, we'll make this one in red. So we have obviously negative and positive. And that'll be the beginnings of uh, the wiring. The rest of the wiring is going to go very similar to that. I'm using just basically these type of connectors uh, or, or these connectors for the, uh, for the power connections. From Two wires coming off the battery, then they're going over to this outlet here. That goes out, but it also connects over to the power switch. Uh, the power is just an on and off switch and it is controlling the other uh, the other two items that we're using over here, that being the 500 watt power inverter in this uh, this car outlet jack. Okay, so now as I told you guys earlier, I do have the uh, the 800 watt uh, inverter, and I'm going to be using that primarily. This uh, I'll just hook this one up to my truck uh, if I need to charge those Phantom batteries. This has the two outlets in it. With 800 watts, I can run two uh, chargers for both two phantom batteries at a time. Uh, right or... Alright, so now you see I've got this box, the, uh, the power inverter and the, the car jacks. Uh, you know, in addition to that, if we just flip these devices back, we can pull off the top. Here's a couple pictures of how I built that box I just took out, and those two braces that hold the battery inside the box. Uh, I have my larger uh, 800 watt power inverter along with the battery and obviously all the wiring. So basically guys this is how the unit sits you know when you're out in the field you've got a, you've got a base or uh, a platform to put your your iPad on. Uh, this, this is the uh, that little box I told you guys uh, I made. Uh, this pulling off here real quick. So, you know, I, 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 I built this little walnut box uh, so that the inside of that would just fit directly over top of the handle here. I just got this on here again with some Velcro. Uh, I put my little uh, uh, Bluetooth module here on the end. Everything is facing in this direction so that I can see the power lights uh, when I'm sitting over here. And that's the reason. And, you know, this cable just, just hangs here. Uh, the power cord comes down, plugs in over here. And then this, again, just slides right on top. And there you are. Okay guys, I'm out of time. I'll leave you with a few final shots. In my next episode, I'm installing a Futaba HJ radio system in the Phantom. I'll see you then.